Hi, Gary Stearman with another daily update from Prophecy of the News, Thursday the 15th of March. Bob Ulrich in studio with me once again. And we're going to talk about uh, a few of the little-known secrets that are in the Bible. And this conversation was brought up, Bob, because uh, Purim was just a week ago. And one of the publications noted that Purim had a hidden secret message in it. And you and I uh, kind of followed that and, and were very interested in it. it it's, it's fascinating. Well, we've been following those hidden secret messages for, you know, for 30-plus years here at the ministry. And... I know J.R. was always fascinated by some of the things we would discover in the Bible that, you know, the average Christian, the average person has no clue whatsoever what the Bible really is and, and how every jot and every tittle literally were handed down and, and just captured, you know, by the Jewish people. A few months ago, we offered a DVD called The Final Prophecies, which was mm -hmm. one of the best DVDs in the history of the ministry, I think. And there were things in there about how the Bible was preserved and how the Dead Sea Scrolls have you know, given corroborating evidence that the Bible we have today is the Bible that was written you know, almost 2,000 years ago or more than 2,000 years ago in a lot of cases. Yeah, that's, that's very true and, and supernatural on uh, several levels. The Bible, Bob, is more than just a surface text. It has symbols and types, and it has something called gematria, which the Jews follow very carefully. And, of course, there have been a, a number of books written lately on gematria. In fact, not just lately, but over the last uh, several hundred years. And Purim reminded us of this, because in the book of Esther, where the evil Haman tries to kill all the Jews by executive fiat, and is overthrown by the good acts of Mordecai and by Esther's testimony and so forth, evil is destroyed instead of the Jews, who are supposed to be destroyed according to the plan of Haman. And Haman ends up being hung on his own gallows. But not just Haman, but also his sons. And we have here in Esther chapter 9, uh, and in Shushan the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. And Parashandatha and Dalphon and Aspatha and Poratha and Adalia and Aradatha and Parmashta and Arisai and Aridai and Vajastha. I did it. Wow. I pronounced all those <laughs> names. The ten sons of Haman, which are Persian names, by the way. And hidden in those names, it was noticed centuries ago uh, by uh, Nachmanides, uh, who was a high rabbi for the Jews, that the original Hebrew text has some of the letters in the names of the sons of Haman written in very tiny size, and one of the letters written in extra large size. I would have got J.R. excited. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, he asserted that any change in a word or letter in the Tanakh indicates some hidden meaning. And traditionally, those letters had been altered for literally hundreds, if not thousands of years. And, and he said that if you examine the list of Haman's ten sons in the scroll of Esther, you will notice that three letters are written small. The letter Tav in Parashanda, the letter Sheen in Parameshta, and the letter uh, Zion in Vayizta are written in tiny size, and the Vav and Vayazda, in verse 9, is written extra large. So uh, Nachmanides said, well, you have four letters written the wrong size. There has to be a message there. They're not accidents. Not accidents. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? <clears throat> the, those, those letters form Tav, Shin, Zion, the numerical equivalent of 707. And when you write dates in, in Hebrew, you leave off the first number, like the year 5707 would just be written 707. Mm. And guess what the year 5707 is? Tell it's us. 1947, <laughs> which is the year of the UN mandate that caused Israel to become a state. And so Nachmanides, writing all those centuries ago, said something important must be be going to happen in the year 5707. And lo and behold, when it came around, 5707 
was the year of the UN mandate that enabled Israel to become a state. And that's an example of some of the little tiny behind the scenes hidden uh, numerical ideas that are that are buried in scripture. You know, you remember the uh, late Yaakov Ramsel. Oh, yes. Uh, we uh, actually introduced Yaakov to the world back in, boy, I can't even remember when, the mid-1990s. He had written a book called Yeshua, the Hebrew Factor. And <coughs> Yaakov, really, he was a, a Messianic rabbi from San Antonio who wrote some of the most amazing stuff that we'd ever written. Absolutely. I'll never forget getting a copy of that book for the first time and reading it and literally running to you with it. Read this. Can this possibly be true? And Yaakov had found the name of Jesus, secreted away in every book of the Old Testament. Every book he found yeah, the, the name of Jesus hidden the away. The four letters, Yuchin Vav Ayin, which spell Yeshua in Hebrew, just four Hebrew letters, Yuchin Vav Ayin, he found those numerically embedded in the Old Testament hundreds of times. And he <laughs> has the verse in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 34, that says, what is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Yeah. And he found encoded in that passage, my name is Jesus. Exactly. I mean, it was just amazing and shocking information. But what I find really most fascinating about Yaakov Ramsel, he didn't use a normal Bible. He actually used these Torah scrolls that he had. And above every word in his Torah scroll, he would write the Hebrew gematria value of that word. Now, you may not know what gematria is or what we're even talking about, but in Hebrew, every letter has a numerical yeah. value. The first letter, Aleph, is one, Beit is two, Gimel is three, uh, Dalit is four, He is five, and so on to the end of the alphabet. It's a, it's a counting system. And it's, it's not a goofy system. It's, no. it's written in the ancients. It's written and used by the Apostle John on the island of Patmos, wasn't sure. it? And, of course, we know what he used it for. He used it to identify the, uh, the Antichrist. Uh, count the number of his name, 600, six right. score, and six. And what that was is he took the letters of the man's name, took every letter, assigned a mathematical value to it, and then added up the letters. And I guess it was a code that John was using to let people know in the last days how you could actually identify this man. And, of course, that's been proven a little bit dangerous over the years. But Hebrew gematria is not like some of the other silly systems that have been created by man over the years. From what I gather, Hebrew gematria is quite ancient. And Yaakov literally had every word with a gematrial value, every sentence with a gematrial value, every verse, every chapter, every book. He had little numbers written above every word in and he his did entire it Bible. By hand. With he did a it pencil. by hand. Yeah. A and and uh, Yaakov Ramsel's books, by the way, he, we introduced him to the world right here on uh, the Prophecy in the News television program. And other people discovered him and he went to the to the heights he of, did. of national and international television broadcasting before he passed on. And I was really happy to see that uh, take place. Well, I bet my dad and Yaakov have had an interesting discussion about me already. Dad passed away two weeks ago, yeah. and I guarantee you Yaakov was one of the people waiting to greet him. I'm sure. Wonderful man. We study the Bible, and, and we study it at all different levels. Uh, we try not to get carried away in any direction in particular, but we're open to the ideas of Scripture, and we, we realize that the things that are going on in the world have supernatural connections. There are no accidents. There are no coincidences. Everything's been laid out in advance, right? Gary, we could go on and on and on and on, probably for hours, about the intricate structure and design of the Bible, how it's constructed around the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. You know, when God talked about uh, speaking the world into existence, you know, you're getting into a really interesting subject there. We'll have to talk well, about that another day. Well, that's a whole different story. <laughs> when he spoke the world into existence, what did he use? Well, the Jews say that he used the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and that merits a whole conversation in and of itself. Is that the language of God? Is that what uh, we're going to speak in heaven? I think that's very likely. Well, we're going to have to uh, let it go with that today, Bob. Uh, I've enjoyed talking with you, as always, and uh, we wish you our uh, viewing audience. A great day in the Lord. Uh, keep watching, by the way. Things are happening fast in this world. And keep looking up.